Hi everyone, so today I'm going to take you through how to care for your Philip Benjamin's lamb and also how to do a little bit of propagation. And then to end things off, we are also going to do a repotting. So that was a lot of also's, but um, this will be a comprehensive care and repotting guide as to how to take care of your Philip Benjamin's lamb. So I actually grew up with this plant, well not the specific plant but this plant in general because it's a very popular garden plant in South Africa and it actually usually I think starts out as a pot plant and then it quickly outgrows its pot and people then like plant it outside in their gardens and if you look at this plant you can see how it's possible that it can quickly outgrow its like pot and cont or, or container with these long aerial roots. So I've had this plant probably a few months and it has had a bit of a brush with um, spider mites. But I did take care of that. Um, all in all, it is a very easy to grow plant. It likes to be in a position of bright light. And also if you place it in bright light, it will grow fairly quickly and fairly big. And I've actually seen quite a few examples of this plant growing outside in people's gardens with deep fenestrations and really big leaves. So it's quite similar to a Mancera deliciosa in that regard, is that when you plant it outside, it does grow quite large and quite big. And also, uh, if you have a pot specimen, it's, it's eventually going to get to that size where it might become unmanageable to keep it inside of your house. Uh, this plant, along with philodendron, like Goldie Eye, was moved into the new uh, genus of Tomatophyllum. So it's not technically a philodendron an anymore, but it's now a Tomatophyllum. Um, but I mean, <laughs> it's still, it's still kind of like the same thing. So I keep my plant upstairs in my study where it gets like bright light, but it doesn't get any direct sunlight. When they are this size, the leaves are quite um, thin and papery and it is really only when they get bigger that they, that they develop those big um, and also leathery tough leaves that can handle direct sunlight. But as a general rule, I would not expose this plant to direct sunlight because even the like, specimens I've seen are growing outside, when they are grown in shade, they really grow like in you know, a big and lush and these beautiful like green um like emerald green leaves um so yeah so eventually I, i'm gonna have to have to put this plant outside perhaps on my patio or plant it outside in the ground but my like, garden space is quite small and i'm not sure that it will be able to accommodate a full grown specimen of this plant. So I feed this plant along with my with my other dendrons with a universal houseplant fertilizer. I haven't found that this plant is is very fussy when it comes to fertilizers. And then I also feed it with my with a tea made from worm castings, which it seems to enjoy and seems to like because it is producing a new leaf that's like coming out here. Um, so for pests and disease, I would look out for mealybugs and also for spider mites. I mean, this plant had some spider mites, um, but in general, pelodendrons are not really like prone to pests if they're grown well and kept hydrated and, and fed well during the year. But I mean, there's, there might still be the odd you know pest that like comes out. I am going to plant this into a very loose mix which will be a mixture of orchid bark and potting soil. This is a super easy plant to propagate either by stem cuttings or by light taking of plantlets. And I actually took off this little plantlet about, a, about three months ago. And it's like grown quite a beautiful root system. And I'll also show you how to plant up this little propagation and probably within six months or even yeah, it should be about this size if placed in, in bright light and are obviously fed and watered well. So let's start with the repotting. So you can see all these roots 
um, coming out of the spot. And these actually act as anchors as the plant grows, because I've seen on mature specimens, um, they almost come out like you know from the sides and they go into the ground to keep the plant like growing upright and stable. Um, I'm not sure if they were attached to a, a ball like a monstera, but it's, it is impossible because I haven't really seen these. No, I lie, I have seen them where they, if, the, if it's planted and close to a tree or close to a palm tree, where it can actually like grow up into the tree. So, so to start off with, I'm actually gonna put some orchid bark into the bottom of my, of my pot. And then I just put in a small amount of soil mix over the top of this. Because actually, we should have a bigger like, container that I mix it to, but I don't at the moment. <laughs> so we're gonna have to just improvise. And now I'm gonna take the plant out of its spots and we'll try and tease these the roots through the drainage holes. And actually recently I also did a video um, about my uh, pelodendron goldie eye. So I'll put that link in the description. There we go. There, that was easy. So you can see how these roots kind of like grow. And there's a, and there's a definite difference between the roots that are grow in the soil and the ones that come out almost more as aerial roots. These ones that grow in the soil is a lot more fine and the ones that, that um, grow as more aerial roots, they are like you know, thick and, and tough. So I'm going to tease these in there. Let's take this one out. Mm. Ah, that's absolutely perfect. So now, I have to almost mix this, but mix it and throw it in here. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take the bark mixture and throw soil into here and then mix it. So I can put it in around the plant. Because you want these plants to be in a fast draining, almost more airy mixture. You know, something that almost simulates a rainforest floor. So I'm just going to take a hand of that, put it in there. This is a mixture of coca coir and, and potting soil. This is provides a lot more uh, fluffy and not as hard and tense as just normal potting soil. So now I'm just going to position my plant in the middle of the pot and just put some of this mixture in around the roots. I'm going to dab it down with my fingers. So now I'm going to take these aerial roots and just kind of position them up on the soil. But, but be careful not to bury them because if you bury them, they can rot and die because they're not used to being almost like enclosed or buried in soil. Um, so you just lay them across the... Um, a surface of your container. They have actually started to grow into media. So there you can see the side, the roots starting to appear. So I'm just going to lay this across the media. Some people actually cut this off, but I don't actually like to do that because for me, um, part of the charm of having a philodendron is actually those roots. It's quite, it's quite similar to a monstera. And I'm just going to throw a little bit of media on top of, of those roots. And now I'm just going to settle my plant into the pot and let the media kind of fill in around the roots and see if there's any um, places where I need to touch up with the media. So I'm thinking that that is done. Now I need to also plant up my small little propagation. So I'm just going to use part of the size 
um, because this plant does have quite a lot of her roots and is quite strong so it can handle being into a bigger like pot so i'm just going to put some more of the like, potting soil into this over here and mix this up and then again throw it in at the bottom i'm just going to see what's happening over here maybe untangle some of the roots a bit um i'm actually quite impressed by how um how good these like the roots have grown and also propagations that um they have such a good way to share plants but have keep plants away as um, gifts to your friends and family um now i'm gonna fill in around my plant and the best thing about propagation really is that you get new plants for free it's a great way to experiment um, with your like, growing culture and experiment with uh, having like the same plants in different locations to see uh, which one uh, like performs better and performs more favorably in those conditions. So now I'm just going to put these little uh, bowls underneath my plants so that like the water doesn't come out and, and spill on the sides. And then I'm just going to give my plants a little bit of water to help settle the media around their roots and to get them um, started into their new home. And this is just a little bit and just helps the media to settle around the roots of the plant and also helps your plant to deal with the stress of being like, transplanted. And also with my little new plant. And that should be enough. When you see the water coming out of the drainage holes, you can know that you've like given it enough water. So now you should be able to care for, propagate and repot your Philodendron Salome. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please hit the subscribe button to see more videos like these.